Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports. And today we're taking a look at one of New Balance's top shoes. It's the Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite V4. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video. This file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Now the shoe we have here in front of me today is part of New Balance's Super Comp series. There's the SC Pacer, which is designed for those shorter distance races. Then the SC Trainer, a pleated daily trainer as the name implies, one of my personal favorites. And then finally we have the SC Elite V4, which is their top tier half marathon and marathon racing shoe. It's completely redone, new midsole foam, new design, new upper, new everything, and I think it's a massive improvement over what we saw last year. It's not perfect, there's some things I'm, I would potentially change, but again, a huge step up from what we saw on the SC Elite V3. Much like most other super shoes, this is going to be on the pricier end of things. It costs $250. As far as the stack height goes, we have 40 millimeters in the heel, a four millimeter drop, and 36 in the forefoot. The SC Elite V4 does weigh 8.4 ounces, which is somewhat heavy for a super race day shoe. And for some context, the Endorphin Pro 4 from Saucony is about an ounce lighter. So it's not a huge thing or not a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. And as you can probably tell, the midsole is completely redesigned. We now have this kind of angular geometry and it's still, at least on paper, being branded as fuel cell foam, which is somewhat confusing as this version feels nothing like last year. And if we bring in the Rebel, which kind of just looks like a mini SC Elite, um, also has fuel cell, but it's a different formulation. The fuel cell on the Rebel is a combination of PIBA and EVA, while the fuel cell here on the SC Elite V4 is just purely a PIBA compound. So all that means is you're gonna have a slightly bouncier, more energetic experience in the SC Elite compared to what you see on the Rebel. If we compare this version of PIBA fuel cell to what we saw last year on the SC Elite V3, which was also, I guess, technically fuel cell, I have to say they feel nothing alike. And this edition is noticeably springier and bouncier. The midsole also just feels like it has more volume overall. I'll also say last year the forefoot felt a bit firm. That's no longer the case. As you move towards the front of the shoe, you have a significantly softer experience as well. This is a rather soft super shoe, especially when we get towards the back half. Yes, that's partially because of the foam, but also because of the large cutout that runs down the center. This allows the foam to expand a bit more once it hits the ground. Now this also exposes the carbon fiber plate which incorporates New Balance's Energy Arc technology. Essentially, unlike most other carbon fiber plates, this plate has a slight curve or arch to it. It runs from your heel and then swoops closer down towards the ground once you get towards the front. Now this does a couple different things. It stiffens up the shoe, helps you notice that incredibly aggressive rocker geometry, and then also stabilizes this really soft foam allowing you to take advantage of the energy return properties without the shoe being too unstable. So what did I think of this completely redesigned midsole? Well, I quite liked it. I was smiling from ear to ear when using this shoe. It's just a fun option. Really soft, plenty of energy return and pop. I wasn't able to bottom it out and just gave me a springy sensation underfoot. Plenty of cushioning too. I didn't feel like my feet were aching after a long run and it was actually surprisingly versatile. When you slowed it down, it handled those slower efforts quite fine and worked quite well when I wanted to pick it up at race pace. Now, the one thing I'll say is this is not the most aggressive super race day shoe. The foam is soft on the softer end of things, has a four millimeter drop and is somewhat heavy at 8.4 ounces. And I'll bring in the Endorphin Pro 4 because I think this shoe truly comes alive when you start to kind of pick it up and isn't as great when you slow it down, at least for me. So I think on the higher end, this is probably a slightly more aggressive, faster and lighter option. Um, so it depends on what you're looking for. The foam here just feels a bit more dense and you have to put a little bit more energy return into it uh, to get that pop and spring out of it compared to something like the SC Elite, which has a slightly softer experience to it. Moving on to the upper, we have a New Balance Calls Phantom Fit. It's very similar to what we see on the Rebel. When you kind of just do the eyeball test, they look almost identical. There's some small differences, but for the most part, it's a very thin engineered mesh. You can see directly into the shoe. The breathability is excellent. And as far as the fit goes, this is going to be a more accommodating race day shoe. Some race day shoes have a rather snug fit, and that's not necessarily the case here. 
plenty of room in the toe box and midfoot. And this shoe also comes in wide if you truly do need that extra room. There is an internal midfoot cage or midfoot support section. Essentially, you have these large pieces of orange material, which are fused directly to the engineered mesh on both the lateral and medial side to give the upper some additional structure, which I do think helps quite a bit. Then if we move on to the tongue, unlike the Rebel, this is kind of a felt-like textured material, incredibly thin and non-gusseted. The tongue is gusseted on the Rebel, so small distinction there. And while I don't think this is a massive deal, it is a minor inconvenience when trying to put your foot into the shoe, partially because this tongue just droops and kind of curls at the ends because it's so thin, so you have to kind of flatten out and get it situated. So it didn't really have an issue while I was running. I always do like to have a little bit more padding to my tongue, but I do realize this is a race day shoe, and otherwise it worked quite fine for me. If we move towards the back, we also have some more of that felt like texture or fabric, and it's a rather smooth back half or ankle and Achilles area on the inside. I thought the heel section was good. It wasn't great on the Rebel. When you feel on the inside, there's a small lip which your ankle can kind of slide into, and that does not exist surprisingly here on the SC Elite V4. It's a very kind of up and down. Now, I thought it worked. I just wish it kind of had that internal lip for added security. So the lockdown I thought was good, could be a little bit better, uh, but otherwise I'm quite happy with this rather accommodating upper. If you're someone who needs a more snug experience or prefers a more tight fitting upper, you might want to go in a different direction because uh, like I mentioned before, there's plenty of volume, especially in the toe box here. Moving on to the outsole, a decent amount of rubber coverage. I will say when comparing it to the Rebel, it appears that it is slightly thinner, uh, which makes sense because this is a racing option. But otherwise, I was really happy with the grip and there's not too much to write home about here. So overall, New Balance makes a massive change to their SC Elite lineup, and I think it's for the better. Personally, I wasn't a huge fan of that knit upper we saw last year, mainly because for one piece in the uppers, your foot has to be like the perfect shape for that to work. And I do prefer this more traditional upper setup. And the fact that we now have a full length Piba midsole with a little bit more stack height, I think goes a long way in making this just a more fun and energetic shoe. Now, is this the most aggressive race day super shoe out there? No, but it's surprisingly versatile for what it is. And I can easily see myself using this for some of my training runs. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this massive redesign and the direction that New Balance is taking some of their super comp shoes. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.